I am here with my second episode of Create a Life You Love. I did the first one last week, and um, this is the second the second one. And I should, I really should number these so people can kind of watch them sequentially. But I I don't think it's going to be necessary. Any place you jump in, you can go back and forth and everything will make sense. My name is Tony Green. I'm a psychic medium and I channel a tremendous, I, ch I channel almost everything. All my sessions are channeled. All of my um, <clears throat> shows are channeled. All of my whoa, books <laughs> that I've done are channeled. This one this one, by the way, oh, I have two copies of it right here. Let's put that copy there. I, mean, I don't want to make it look like I have more books than I do. This book right here, by the way, um, is Poems and Messages from Above. And there are three poems in this book that I couldn't get through. Like, I, 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 I'm not kidding when I say I channel these, but one poem in particular kind of took me down for a minute. I... I tried to edit it and tried to edit it. And it took me like three or four times before I could get through that poem without breaking down. It really hit something inside of me. And everybody who I gave a copy of the book to you to review it said, have tissue with you. <laughs> so these are, some of the poems are amazing and happy place poems, but some of them will hit that spot in you that says, hey, Wow, that's real. And there's a poem in here that I channeled that is from loved ones up above. And I balls out love that. Okay. Next, this is the first book of poems that I did. I channeled poems and messages from above. And it's a little bit more um, lighthearted. And then these four are um, transformation books that uh, you watch you do one word a day and they transform your life. And then there's this one, which is um, What If a Transformational Journey? One of my favorite books so far. Uh, and I say so far because I'm always working on books, I'm always working on poems, I'm always working on, I'm always working. I just love creating which is what we're going to go to now. All of my books are available at amazon.com. Tony Green with an E at the end. Okay, here we go, folks. Are you ready? Second episode, Create a Life You Love for WSCS and YouTube. Let's get into it because this is, um, this, this is so imperative to each and every person, but especially at this time in the world when people are in a place where there's so much fear in the world. And I do, please don't argue with me about this. If you want to argue about anything that comes out of my mouth, argue with the angels because they bring it through me, okay? And this is intentional fear. This fear was intentionally brought to people at this time with an agenda. So we need to turn it around. We need to get back to that place of faith because faith is where we create. Faith is where we go into that space where we are knowing we are okay, the world's okay, everything is going to be okay. Once we're in that space of faith, we can start really moving forward and ideas come to us and our vibration or our frequency raises. And that's really what we want. We want to be in that space where our frequency goes up, even if just, just, um, just a, a minute amount every single day. We just really need to be in that space where every single day our energetic frequency goes up just a little bit, just a little bit, just a little bit. And then before you know it, you're flying high. And that's where we want to be. And a lot of this comes, this lower frequency vibrational stuff comes from our thoughts and our beliefs. And yes, okay, last the last episode, 
one of the things, you know, in the law of attraction, it says, put it on a board, just put it out into the universe. Yeah, that's really important. But you have to be able to feel it. Okay, you have to be able to feel it with want and not fear. You have to feel it with faith. So if there's something that you really want, something you really want to bring to you, you have to feel it and believe it can come to you. You have to have the faith that it's something that's meant for you. Now, 90% of the people who buy lottery tickets don't believe they're going to win. They, they have a dream that they'll win. But if you ask them, do you think you're going to win? Nah, I'm just, I'm just like, I'm just wasting my money here. My, I, I, I don't believe I'll win the jackpot. Maybe I'll win something. Um, so that is what I'm talking about. What do you believe can really come to you? Now, I want you to start changing your belief systems, your perceptions, even if just a little bit at a time. Last week, one, one of the things I said is, it's important for you to say, I deserve better. And the other important thing is, it's not what you want, it's what you believe you deserve. So the way we're brought up, we kind of are brought up in a way we're always getting punished as children, right? <laughs> Told we were wrong. So we carry that into adulthood. But the other thing we carry into adulthood is what our parents said about money, what our our family dynamic and economic system was? Was there always just enough? Because no matter how much money you make until you break that just enough pattern, mm -hmm, let me say that again, no matter how much money you make, earn, bring in, until you break that just enough pattern or habit or belief, that's where your financial situation is going to stay. So you might bring in like $100,000 a year, but then you've you've annied up your car and your mortgage and your appliances and you know your 10 TVs throughout your house and you're back at that place where you're making just enough. Just enough. So how do you get past that? You have to change that I, I'm surviving to I'm thriving. So don't even think survival anymore. Think I'm thriving every day. I deserve better and I'm thriving. I deserve better and I'm thriving. I deserve better and I'm thriving. And in this economic time, another thing I say on my show that I air every Monday at noon for 30 minutes is if there ain't a job, create one. If you can't get a job, make one. There's a there's a reader on um, one of the one of the readers that I listen to every once in a while, and she said, you know, before she started reading on YouTube, she she delivered groceries to elderly people. Okay, how amazing is that? Like she just did it, and and like who cares? Who cares what anybody thinks about it? There are a lot of people who clean people's homes that could start their own business like that. They just have to get that right market, right? And if you don't want to clean people's homes, start a cleaning business. All these businesses like at home and all these businesses that are out there now are catering to elderly people who don't want to be put in a home. They want to stay in their home. They need groceries. They need people to come in clean. They need caretakers. They just need someone to talk to. Start a business where you people just go in and talk to elderly people and listen to their listen to them talk. I mean, there are so I mean, I just named off like 10 businesses and I could name off a hundred more. In but that's not I'm not gonna spend this whole show just naming businesses you could start. But the idea is there are so many businesses you could start, excuse me, while I get more comfortable and get like start to really get into this. Now, my notes are here today instead of there. That was awkward last week. So here we go. Oh, oh, here we go. Okay. Some of the thoughts or beliefs that we have are if, if something bad happens, we believe it's just going to get worse. Like, right? We do. But if something good happens, we think it's just a one-time thing. And 
Why don't we believe it's just going to keep getting better? So anytime you get a win, I don't care how minute that win is, how tiny that win is, write it and say, oh, this is just the beginning of my winning. This is just the beginning of my winning. Okay. Um, don't think this happened. So something bad's going to happen. I went through a spurt of time. And I, I often do, and I don't I don't brag about it because people say they want good for other people, but inside, if they're not having good happen for them, they kind of get a little ish ish when they hear about good for other people, right? So I was going through a spurt of really good things in my life, like law of attraction, if you want to call it that, just stuff coming in like nobody's business. And um, and then I had my third near-death accident and my careers, careers had to change, my life had to change, uh, which was a blessing in disguise because, well, here I am. <laughs> um, and somebody said to me, well, maybe that accident happened because of all the good that came. Really, I feel so badly for that person. Like, how can you believe that you would get blessing on blessing on blessing just to get a curse? That's not how the universe works. That's not why we're here. We're here to be blessed, to teach blessings. We're here to thrive and, and to create and to co-create and to get it out there for everybody okay we're here to accomplish show accomplish grow accomplish show accomplish grow and if you have that mindset that you're here to create a brand new world to create the life that you want and whatever you want believe me there is such an abundance of everything. So when you want something, you're not taking from anybody. There is so much being made every day. Like, could you imagine, I want a Mercedes Benz, but there's only one. No, even in this economic time that is supposed to be so sucky, they're rolling them off the tracks every single, they didn't stop making Mercedes Benz. They didn't stop making BMWs. They didn't stop making, you know, anything except for Clorox wipes for a hot minute and toilet paper, apparently. For some reason, we couldn't keep making those or enough of that. And isn't it ridiculous? Because, and here, that's a perfect example of mass law of attraction. The media put it out there that there wasn't going to be enough and Boom, everybody went out and then there wasn't enough. Okay, so there's a perfect example of mass law of attraction in fear. Now, we have to get back to that place of faith. Okay, home builders were still building. We didn't run out of building supplies during this time. I mean, Think, folks, think. Anyway, so the first thing is when something good happens, this is the beginning of my winning, okay? This is the beginning of my winning. If you are out and and even if you find a, a dime on the ground, well, look up to heaven and say, hey, thanks to whatever relative you think gave that to you and say, this is the beginning of my winning. That's free money. It's a dime, but it's a dime, right? Whatever it is that comes to you, it's the beginning of your winning. Okay. Another thing is, oh, oh, uh, okay. Uh, okay. I heard this when I was growing up. If you're really happy one day, as happy as you are this day, the next day you're going to be sad or cry. That's if you if you laugh one day, you're going to cry the next. Why would somebody say that to you? Maybe they're sadistic. 
I don't know, but it's not true. All these things we heard as children are not true. Uh, what if that's the beginning of your happiness? What if you're just happy and you're always happy? Like, and here's where we go into the next one. Um, it literally is not what happens to you in life. It's how you look or your perception of what happens to you in life. Everybody has gone through trauma in life. Everybody has gone through something. It doesn't matter if you think it was their fault or not their fault or your fault or not your fault. You're either a victim or you're a victor. And we're neither. We're not victims. We're not victors. We're just here. We're just here learning and growing. So everybody has a story. Everybody has something. Everybody has a book in them. Everybody could write the traumas and the tragedies of their life. Everybody could do that, right? Because we've all had it. And as long as you look at it as a trauma or a tragedy, you're going to keep repeating that pattern of trauma and tragedy. So it's not what happened. It's not what happened in your last relationship. And, it, it, and we're taught, okay, so this is going to kind of merge into another thing. The way we're taught to handle things and the way we're taught to handle a breakup, the way we're taught to handle money, all of these things are still playing out. So our perception of what happened and then how we handled it takes us either to the next level up or the next level down. Sometimes a relationship ends and it just ends. It's it, it, Nobody has to be the bad guy. Even if somebody cheated, they don't have to be the bad guy. Maybe that was a blessing in disguise to, to move you to the next best thing or to just get you out of a situation where you weren't really happy in the first place. It doesn't matter. Nobody has to be the bad guy. You don't have to walk away from things being the victim because the victim never experiences the beginning of winning and then the continuation of winning. They're two in the energy of victim. Now, it's okay if you don't agree with this right now, but just sit with it for a moment in silence. And then look at the people you know who are in victimhood, who are constantly in the woo-woos, as my one sister likes to call them. Yeah, she's so funny. Like when I talked to her, she was like, she literally, this is her literal sentence. And then I woo-woo and he woo-woo and then the woo-woo went. And I'm like, what's a woo-woo? I don't know what a woo-woo is. And I can't ask her because she's in the middle of her stuff. You know, I can't be like, wait, stop. What's a woo-woo? But I, I think it's the whole conversation in a, in a ball. Okay, but as long as she's in her woo-woo state, <laughs> there's no way I'm going to be able to get through to her and say, listen, drop it and go. It's time to move to the next. It's time to move to that next level. Uh, let go of he did this to me and move into I did this for me which is moving to that next level, what, whatever that level is, whether it's work, money, finance, uh, work, money, relationship, move to that next level. And sometimes that ne next level is just by yourself. Sometimes that next level is you on your own, learning who you are, what you want, and building, okay? And that's perfectly beautiful. But as long as you're in that place where things have happened to you, instead of things have happened for you, you're never going to get to that place where things are happening for you. So let's let go of the things that have happened to us and have the perception that everything happened for us. We don't have to know why it happened for us. We don't have to know what the beautiful, unbeautiful lesson was. We just have to move into that space where we are going for the next level, the very next level, the very next thing. So on that, I want to jump into um, from there, from, from uh, it's, it's your perception. Let's go into... Uh, 
your daily life and how that affects your daily life. So there are people that no matter what their job is, no matter how much money they're making, they're very happy. And then there are people who no matter what their job is, no matter how much money they're making, they're very unhappy. So it's the actually, it's how you feel about where you are and what you're doing that raises your frequency or your energy or lowers your frequency and your energy. And how much you feel you deserve where you are is just as big of a part of that. So if you feel you deserve better, that's awesome. Then go out and get better, but don't complain about where you are. Don't complain about what's going on with it. Don't carry that energy of feeling horrible about the circumstances you're in and where you are. Work towards something better. Like I said, I can think of a million different jobs, a million different businesses, a million different companies that people could have in a hot minute. And if you sit back and you think of, you know, this is what I'm capable of. This is what I can do. And then you get out there and you start doing it. You can create your own business first for you and then for others. It's it's it really is that simple. It it there are business owners like Uber. I know I keep bringing up Uber on all of most my shows. I don't know why, um, but there are so many different uh, companies that have been started like this, just in this way, and there are so many different businesses that are about to boom based on things that are going on in this world. Every time something in the world changes, it's an opportunity to integrate and bring next generation disruption businesses or new businesses in. If 2020 taught us anything, it's that those who had a strong online presence survived. So anybody who delivered or started delivering survived and they thrived. They survived and they thrived. People who didn't deliver found a way to deliver if they wanted to thrive. They didn't give up. They didn't concede. They didn't give in. And that's part of what this is about. Having that fight inside of you, finding that fight inside of you and running with it, working with it, making it light you up every morning when you get out of bed and making you want to go for it, making you intentionally plan your day, get your goals and go for it. So if you are in a place where you're not happy, if you're doing work that doesn't light your fire, that's okay. You don't have to quit your day job right now. You don't ever have to quit your day job. Some people keep their day job for their benefits and then they have their side thing going on that they're slowly building, slowly getting there. Some people, I, I know people who keep their day job because they love their, their benefits, but then they start a YouTube channel on how to make braids and hair. And you think, but how do you make money off of showing people something on YouTube? <laughs> there are so many ways to monetize YouTube. <laughs> Trust me. I get so many people contacting me, asking me to be their partners to push their products. Okay. I, I don't do that, but if you want to keep your day job, keep your day job, keep that, keep your benefits, keep that. But then at night or on the weekends or in your spare time, right, do whatever it is that you can do that gives you independence, creativity, and raises your frequency. When you do that, when you take control of your life, and that's really what it's about. All of a sudden, 
everything starts to come back into place. Now in relationships, in work, in finances, when we feel we don't have control, that's when our frequency starts to go down. When we feel like we have a bit of control, when we feel like I've got this, that's when our frequency starts to go up. Now, the higher our frequency is, the more things flow to us, the easier life becomes. So sometimes we get into a relationship or a career or a company where we feel like they kind of own us or we've lost our independence or things just aren't going well and we don't know how to turn it around. The first step is if it's a career, start looking for something else and get into something else. Okay. The second step is if it's, if it's a relationship, start jumping out of that relationship. Relationships are partnerships. They are 100% partnerships and they should be looked at as business partnerships first. Okay. If you wouldn't trust this person with the key to your business, don't give them the key to your bedroom for sure. For reals. Okay. Seriously. That's just one relationship tip, but everything should be a partnership. And if you don't feel like it gets equal and if you feel like you've lost control, of an aspect or a part of your life, that is the thing that will bring your frequency down the, the fastest and you need to find a way to get it back. In a career, you can easily have a side thing, something you start on your own that brings in more money or helps you to be more creative. Or you can you can work somebody else's side thing delivering, <laughs> delivering food for the elderly. <laughs> there you go. Um, and making extra money and, and getting those ideas, getting that frequency back, getting back in that place where you're creating and not just existing. Creating is probably the most important thing you can do here. Okay. On this planet, we come here to create to co-create, to make miracles. And your miracles and my miracles are going to look completely different every single day of the week because we're two different people who want different things in our lives, which is the way it should be. That's absolutely 100% the way it should be. My number one tip I gave last week, I'm going to give it to you again this week. As you fall asleep, and this is how I got my first vehicle. My first, um, not my first vehicle, although my first, my very first vehicle, my Z28, my Camaro Z28, um, big block, uh, eight, eight, uh, what, what is that? Eight. Anyway, that was a gift. That was a gift. Um, but my, <clears throat> my first actually tried to manifest vehicle um, I was falling asleep and I just thought of this vehicle and everything that I wanted with this vehicle and how I wanted to get this vehicle. And within two months, I received a Jeep Grand Cherokee um, off the showroom floor, absolutely free, didn't even have to pay the taxes on it. I put it out into the universe during prayer. I, I pray as I fall asleep and I was praying for this and the universe brought it back to me. God, I, I say God. So if you don't say God, I'm sorry, but I do. Whatever modality or deity you use is fine.